Okay, here's what every person needs to know. After taking an antibiotic to properly detox your body so that the chemicals used during that process don't harm you, even if you didn't feel any of the symptoms. So what you're gonna learn here is number one, the simple basic detox formula to properly balance out your gut microbiome, especially after an antibiotic. Why you need three forms of a beneficial gut bacteria for the upper, middle, and lower digestive tract. We're gonna break down those three forms that a lot of people have never heard about. And then finally, what you can do immediately after taking an antibiotic or undergoing a medical test when they use some kind of contrast medium like they would with an MRI or a CT scan. So this is where we're gonna break this down. So, so glad you are with me here. Uh, we're gonna first start to break down here some of my notes on the antibiotic and medical testing, sort of the detox side of this, okay? Now, antibiotics have been around for a really, really, really long time. There's roughly 40 trillion microbes inside that live inside your body. You have more microbes living in you than you have cells. Kind of disgusting, but it's true, and a lot of them are our friends. Now, sometimes enemies can invade or overtake, and that causes problems, which is why antibiotics were created. But most of these bacteria are in our gut, and they can impact everything from how we digest our food to how we defend ourselves against outside threats such as viruses or parasites and bacteria, of course. Now, the microbes create a gentle balance okay, that can be disrupted really easily by medical treatments. And some of those can be life-saving or necessary, but they can still be thrown off, and especially antibiotics are one of the hardest on it. Now, the first modern-day antibiotic was used in the 30s. Now, before antibiotics, okay, just to put the disclaimer, 30% of all deaths in the United States were caused by a bacterial infection. Now, a lot of which has been corrected by the health development of the century, according to CDC, World Health Organization, was running water. When it got established in the United States, when we weren't drinking near the same place they were going to the bathroom, when things were missing, when we were keeping very clean, that obviously changed it. But antibiotics could have saved more lives back then and are certainly essential as part of our society today from an emergency perspective. There are over 10 billion prescribed antibiotics every year that are given for conditions they never should have been given to, and a lot of those are given to our kids. So they do help. Running water is what's clean things up, staying clean, staying cleanly by using simple soap, washing your hands, taking regular showers. That's what I'm referring to. The less toxins we can use to fight these bacteria, the better, okay? now. An antibiotic operates by attacking the wall or the coating around bacteria. They stop and interfere with the reproduction of the bacteria, and then they block protein production inside of the bacteria. So that's the mechanism by which they work. There are several classes of antibiotics, but we need to be leery of them. And I believe for myself, for my family, we really want to be in a pure emergent scenario before we turn to something like that. Because oftentimes there's a viral infection going on, such as an ear infection, and we give it an antibiotic because the doctor's feeling pressured from the parent or from the patient to do something. And so they go for the ex generally accepted antibiotic to see if that will help, when really if we had done nothing, things would have cleared up within a couple of days. So certainly seek medical advice if you're struggling with one of those issues, but we've got to raise our threshold a little bit of when and when not to use antibiotics. Because all the ones that we use now today they used to be made in petri dishes and cultivated, but now they are made in a lab. So they're made with extensive chemicals and they're made through a series of chemical reactions now. And then they produce the substance that can be used as a medication. So when you take an antibiotic, the sensitive bacteria in the body are eliminated. The bacteria that survive during an antibiotic treatment are often then resistance, resistant to that antibiotic. So that means it kills good bacteria that might be helping you out. It might kill some of the enemy, but some of each is also going to survive. The bacteria inside your system that's good is resistant to that antibiotic, which is that's a good thing. But the enemies inside your body that are now resistant now creates an enemy that can't be killed off using an antibiotic. So this has become a big problem where what once used to be would be used like penicillin can't be used in someone now because they're resistant to it. So they have unique characteristics, these enemy bacteria, that prevents the antibiotics from working against them.
And so those are going to be very leery of. If you use antibiotics too often, that's one side effect that starts to happen. And then you can create bigger and bigger immune and health problems. Other side effects of antibiotic use, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, cramping, and then more severe diarrhea, stomach pains along with the cramping, blood in your stool, or even a spiked fever. So these are some of the things to immediately be looking out for. But what I wanna talk about today a little bit more is the use of, associated with antibiotics, when you use them, the increased risk longer term. There's been several studies now tied, uh, Journal of American Medical Association and other research journals that tied the use of an antibiotic to increased risk of fatal breast cancer, increased risk of colon cancers. When we're using these long term, I'm not saying to never use them or there never be a need, but are we overusing them? Research say that some antibiotics can kill out the healthy gut bacteria during the use. And we're understanding this more and more. So what that does is you're dropping the atomic bomb on a sinus infection. <laughs> this is a firefight and you drop the atomic bomb and it kills the good bacteria in the gut leading to longer term gastrointestinal ailments and reincurring infections because you don't have the good bacteria to keep you balanced out. And people said that, experts say that people taking antibiotics should then eat immediately foods that are rich in this good bacteria to build them up. Foods that are gonna feed that good bacteria. Foods that are gonna create the post-production of what that bacteria cr creates so it can get the nutrients in the gut needed to keep it thriving. Now, fermented foods are very good at this. Sauerkrauts are very good at this. And very important to be eating these types of food while you're using a medication like an antibiotic. Now, that's not our only threat. Antibiotics are one. And I'm not saying they're never necessary. I think we overuse them though. So friendly bacteria, the important side of it is the friendly bacteria themselves can protect you from the antibiotics and clean up the toxins and the pollutants that wreak havoc on the body. So the friendly bacteria actually prevent you from the medical tests and from the antibiotics themselves. We wanna build those up. Now there are three main types when it comes to the biotics of the body, the bacteria of the body. So let's start with pre, pre, pro, and post. Now prebiotics, are the source of food for the bacteria. So before the biotic, the bacteria actually gets thriving, we wanna have enough meals to feed these little armies. And they're made up typically of soluble fibers. So it doesn't impact your blood sugar levels, it helps feed those, and it nourishes the good bacteria in the gut. Soluble fiber is fermented by the gut bacteria that becomes that source for our microbiome. Some food sources of prebiotics themselves, so you can eat more of this and feed more of the good bacteria. Onions, leeks, chives, garlics, these types of fibers that help feed it. There's different roots that help. That's the prebiotics we want to be putting to feed the good bacteria. So then we go to pro. This is the one you're probably most familiar with. This is the friendly microbes that live inside our intestines and that are made of the beneficial types of yeasts and bacterias that are found in our gut to help protect us. It's important to get a good dose of them where you can actually take in healthy bacteria, probiotics, into the system, especially during and following antibiotic use or medical testing use, as a lot of the antibiotics knock down and wipe out those good and the bad bacteria that we talked about, okay? Research shows that the use of probiotics during antibiotic treatment decreases the level of antibiotic resistance. It actually allows them to work better. Doctor never told you that one, did they? If we're using prebiotics, we're feeding the good bacteria. We're ingesting in good bacteria with probiotics, especially if an antibiotic or a medical test is killing it. Then there's postbiotics. Now this is the most important one that you probably haven't heard of. A postbiotic is the bioactive compounds that the probiotics, the bacteria, produce when they consume their food, the prebiotics. So the probiotics of the bacteria eat the food, the prebiotic, and then they produce, they excrete bioactive compounds that are incredibly powerful and important for your body. In fact, many of the health benefits that are linked with pre and probiotics come from the production of these postbiotics. So why? probiotics are so beneficial is because they produce postbiotics. Well, you can consume postbiotics. And research shows many health issues such as GI and colon, lower, deeper down into the system, get support by these. 
They help bolster the immune system. They decrease digestive issues, especially sensitivities, IBSs, diarrheas, and the risk of these allergies that develop in the gut, of sensitivities to food, they help to lower those. So postbiotics, these three should be used in unison. Pre to feed them, pro to add in more good bacteria, post to get the full benefit of what these bacteria do in our body with these bioactive compounds. Now, a lot of people will jump to, yeah, Dr. Living Good, I like it. I like getting prebiotics in, probiotics, and I want them to produce postbiotics. Um, I do yogurt. I wanted to speak specifically to this because there are several reasons why I would advise against yogurt not being a good probiotic source. Number one, there's a lot of added sugars inside of yogurt. For itself, it is lactose, so it's ending in O-S-E, which means it turns into sugar into your body, but there's oftentimes added sugars to the processing of yogurt for the taste of it, syrups used, toppings, bottoms added in. So we've got to be very careful of added sugars. Number two, there's oftentimes artificial flavorings or artificial sugars added. And then finally, number three, most of us don't need extra dairy in our system. So I've kind of moved this one out from my smoothies, from really having it at all. And if I am gonna have dairy, it might be in an organic sour cream as a topper, or maybe an organic cheese. But I just cut out yogurt because it's extra unneeded dairy. We can easily do a smoothie or something along those lines for breakfast and avoid it, even Greek yogurt. Now the problem here is, as well, for those that are earth conscious, the process of acidifying the whey and the dairy to make yogurt creates byproduct that can't be dissolved and is incredibly acidic for the earth. So the process of Greek yogurt production is actually bad for the environment, let alone your body of getting extra dairy in, which it would have to be from grass-fed cows if you're gonna have it, with no added sugars if you're gonna have it. So we just wanna be very aware of those things. So avoiding yogurt, what can we start to do? to get antibiotics in. Focusing on fermented foods would be a very good idea. Kimchi is an excellent source. Sauerkraut is an excellent source um, for it. Any kind of fermented beverage, a kefir and a kombucha, you just wanna watch your sugar content on those two. Those are gonna be excellent sources of the probiotics, okay? The prebiotics, the soluble fibers that we referred to are a good way to get those in. And the postbiotics is what is produced but you can supplement with each of these. And that whole formula of pre, pro, and post all combined together is what I've created to be able to get these proper biotics into the system. So you're taking them in, you're stimulating the production of all three, so it helps from production to in the gut to the lower colon all the way through pre, pro, and post. Most probiotics, in the market today, maybe contain a prebiotic. You'll rarely ever find one that has a postbiotic with it. So you're getting way more benefit of the three of those working together. Now, what I should also note is most probiotics created are created from a laboratory and they are uh, a more of a synthetic form and they're very fragile. So they don't get by the state of the stomach, which is very acidic and they don't make it into the small intestine, let alone the large intestine all the way down through. The form of probiotics that do the best are the ones made in nature, right in the soil. And so part of the benefit of gardening and growing your own vegetables is you're working in the soil and you are getting these microorganisms on your skin and on your food. And when you take those in, those are excellent sources of pre, pro, and postbiotics your own real vegetables. So overwashing them kind of removes some of those benefits. So it's a great way to get these biotics in, but these are soil-based organisms. Soil-based probiotics are more shelf stable. So when they're in transit or on the shelf or when they get into your body, they're more stable. They make it past the stomach into the small intestine, get lower into the digestive tract. So you get more benefit from them and they don't lose their potency nearly as fast or at all in the transit or why they were sitting on the shelf by the time they get into your body. So soil-based probiotics, 
with a combo of prebiotics to feed them and postbiotics to get the extra beneficial compounds deeper into the digestive tract. Those are your top levels of, if you're looking for a supplementation of it, there's a link below. You can get more information on the ones that I created to make sure we're meeting those criteria in healthy food formats right from the soil the way God made them so they're nice and protected. Now, let's bring this together and make some protocols out of this, all right? Here is the antibiotic recovery protocol. So if you are facing a scenario, it is emergence, and you are going to need an antibiotic, here's what you do. So from a detox perspective, you're gonna to wanna to go through after the antibiotic is done, rebuilding your gut. So this is called the three-day collagen cleanse. We're loading up on collagen for three days, giving the body the repairing substance of collagen, and then you take that with a form of pre pro post biotics. Okay, so right after we're going to want to be doing the three day collagen cleanse with the pre pro post biotics. Okay, we have links below. You'd be able to see some of these things or get to know them a little bit better. All right, so loading up on collagen just means you're putting in six to eight glasses of bone broth or a collagen smoothie, a powdered collagen on a daily basis. And what that is doing is restoring the lining of the gut, getting the nutrients into the gut so it can repair itself. The pre, pro, postbiotics during that time. Now, the regimen for those is seven days before you start, if you have this luxury, begin a pre, pro, postbiotic, soil-based. Take it seven days prior. Typically, antibiotics are a 10 to 14-day period. Take it during that 14-day period of time and then continue it for 39 days after, so a 60-day process. Now, if you've used antibiotics a couple of years ago, I just recently put myself through this. I went through and did a, uh, I didn't do the collagen cleanse at that point, but I did put in, my family and I just went through doses of pre, pro, post, soil-based biotics into our system to help restore, nurture the bacteria in that gut. And we just took the whole container. Now, our little container will last you up to 60 days. And if you're being more aggressive with it, then you're gonna go through it faster, depending on your scoop size. But with one scoop, you're getting 25 billion CFUs of probiotics. You're getting 11 billion CFUs of postbiotics and several milligrams, hundreds of milligrams of prebiotics. So it doesn't take much. The scoop is rather small, but you get all of that in. You can put it into any smoothie. You can put it in with the collagen and you're bolstering this up. So I just did this. I put it right in with my green drink or put it right in with my smoothie for myself and the kids to bolster this back up. And we went through a 60 day supply. Now, as a bonus from an antibiotic recovery perspective, you may look at ox bile. Ox bile is additional bile that is safe for the body to stimulate gallbladder production. Very important for anyone without a gallbladder. L-glutamine repairs the mucosal lining of the gut. Digestive enzymes help to break down food so there's less strain on the gut. You may also consider decreasing inflammation after or during an antibiotic by using a fish oil that is high in DPA or EPA or DHA or turmeric, which is also good for lowering inflammation. So that's the antibiotic recovery side of it. Right after an antibiotic, using a three-day collagen cleanse. During, before and after, using the pre-pro postbiotics. It will help antibiotic along and it'll minimize the damage. And you may consider some others if you do have um, gut lining issues, not breaking your food down properly, or you don't have a gallbladder, you may consider those. Inflammation, addressing that during it is also good as well. There's the recovery protocols to help break you down from the antibiotic perspective, load up on the, the biotics beforehand, do a collagen cleanse, and load up on the biotics after. Important protocols, hopefully I've made that simple, Making health simple is my goal for you of being proactive during these times to be eating these foods, to be doing these cleanses when we're getting these tests that we have no way around. If they are an emergent situation, you have to get them. There's a way to protect your body so it doesn't cause more damage and you can experience real health. So hopefully that made health simple. Check out more resources on the page that you can be able to um, dig deeper into these videos and understandings of how to do these processes and protect yourself.